I started getting big. I was like probably like six foot in like fifth grade. Started sprouting and put me in football. First year, I played everything, quarterback, running back, anything you name. Did that U12, 6'2", running back. I was crazy, insane that year. 99-yard touchdowns back to back. But yeah, and then that's when I knew I was going to be special. Darnell Washington may very well be the greatest physical specimen we've ever seen in the history of high school recruits. The tight end out of Vegas is currently 6 foot 8, 270 pounds. If you're wondering what LeBron James would look like suited up in a football uni, this guy is the closest you'll get. His high school coach has sent countless players to play Division I ball and states that he's never seen anything like the interest in Washington. Physically, they believe he's an NBA player that happens to love and play football. When college scouts have come in, they've told me this is the best looking high school football player they've ever seen. The hype surrounding Darnell hasn't come close to being on the same spectrum for someone like LeBron or Zion, but that may be because we've never seen a high school tight end or even a high school football player have this kind of build. But while the national hype may not amount to much when comparing him to the legends of LeBron or Zion, everyone in the high school football world can't help but be in awe of this never before seen talent. But what makes the story of Darnell Washington even more intriguing than just the physical aspects is that this kid has truly come from nothing. Darnell grew up with his older brother Ezekiel and his mother Katrina in Henderson, Nevada, where he recalls a few experiences that have helped motivate him to get where he is today. We'd move around, never really stable. We'd get kicked out of one area because we couldn't pay rent, find another apartment, get kicked out of that one, and the cycle would start again. The living situation got so bad at one point for Darnell and his family that he had a four month stretch where he was sleeping on his sister's tiled floors. Another month, Darnell and his brother slept on their friend's couch with his mother parked outside of the house sleeping sleeping in her car. His mother would constantly struggle to make ends meet and find a reliable job, but it never got in the way of Darnell and his older brother following the wrong path. His brother Ezekiel, who's only a year older than Darnell, has been the main influence in his life. When Darnell and his brother were in middle school, their mother got in a horrific car accident which put her in a coma and left the teenage boys to fend for themselves for three whole months. My mom, she went to major back surgery so for like four months. so. When me and my brother Ezekiel, we was at home and we was just like finding our own way, like survive basically. Cause my dad was in Cali and my mom was getting better. So she would get out and take care of us again. His big brother has always been the one to uplift Darnell and make sure the two would do what they could to set themselves up for a better future. When Ezekiel is asked about their rough childhood, he says that most of the time it was the brothers who were raising each other rather than their mother or any other parental figures. We never had a father figure in our lives, so we basically helped raise each other and helped each other keep it together. We've had to look out for each other. Darnell's mother didn't even have enough money to get him and Ezekiel into youth football leagues when they were young. However, the two always had a passion for football, so they found ways to better themselves as athletes without being able to compete on the field. Ezekiel would look up football drills on YouTube, and the two would go out in the middle of the night to work on the drills. As Darnell would get older and started turning into the specimen he is today, he didn't have the type of coaching that would elevate his games to the next level. He spent his freshman year at Basic Academy High School in Henderson, Nevada, but the fortune of his football career would change after he transferred to Desert Pines High School in Vegas for his sophomore year. When an assistant coach of Desert Pines saw Darnell run routes for the first time, he could not believe what he saw. I always knew there was a way to become one of the best. Now the wings and the boundaries. So we I walked up to him, I told Ezekiel and Darnell, I told him if you listen to everything I say, you guys will be very, very successful. I knew what I had on my hands and I, I knew that he was literally going to be one of the best players in the country. Literally, you don't see people that size move like that. Like he runs like a gazelle. And so to see somebody that fast and elusive and that kind of bend, it's special. And I don't think a lot of people realize what we're witnessing right now. While Darnell was turning heads on the practice field before his sophomore year, it was his character that blew assistant coach David Hill away. They got in a situation where they were staying in a motel. They're telling me like, hey, we don't know where we're gonna stay. We're staying in a motel, but coach, we have the fundraising money. And it blew me away that they didn't know where they were gonna be staying. They were basically homeless for a minute, and he's telling me that he has fundraising money. I just, it threw me for a loop, especially in the community. I graduated from Desert Pines, so if I got $150 in fundraising money, that money gone. If I don't know where I'm about to lay my head at. 
Entering his sophomore season, Darnell wasn't even on the recruiting radar for college scouts, mainly because he hadn't gotten the opportunity to showcase himself. But transferring to Desert Pines was a huge step in the right direction for Washington, since college recruiters already showed up on a regular basis to take a look at their talent. Nobody even knew who he was. He was just a big kid. Once they saw him playing and they saw his size, coaches just started lining up. But what really captured the attention from the scouts was the way he moved for his size and his ball skills for a 6 foot 7, 240 pound sophomore. This type of guy is usually playing basketball. When you see an athlete of his caliber with his size and his skill set on the football field, it really catches your attention. You would expect him to maybe be a little clunky or not as fluid as other players, but he moves seamlessly. I think that's what's most impressive. Washington had already racked up 20 plus offers through his sophomore year from the most prestigious D1 schools in the nation. The hype surrounding Darnell kept growing from recruiters through his junior season, even though the coaches admitted that they didn't even know how to use such a unique talent. His stats weren't necessarily turning any heads, but the potential of his size and skill set was what turned him into the highest ranked tight end of the past decade. By his senior year, he was finally putting up big numbers, which resulted in him moving up to the 14th best prospect of the 2020 class. And for playing a position that isn't valued nearly as high as the other five-star recruits in the nation, being ranked that high for a tight end is honestly insane. In reality, the only thing that's holding him back from being a top five recruit in the nation is his position. When it comes to who can match up with Washington on the field, the answer is nobody. In an interview after the Under Armour All-American game in January, Washington was asked who could match up with him on the field. I'm too fast for linebackers and I'm too big and physical for corners and safeties. Some might take that as being a little cocky, but when you actually think about it, this man is going to be a matchup nightmare no matter the competition. We've always raved about the type of football player player LeBron could have been if he pursued it past high school. And when you compare the measurables of LeBron to Darnell Washington, they're almost identical. LeBron is listed at 6 foot 9, 250 pounds with a 7 foot wingspan. Darnell is listed at 6 foot 8 and due to being a tight end, he's bulked up to 270 pounds since arriving in Athens, Georgia with a 7 foot 3 wingspan. With the way Darnell is put together right now, if he bulks up another 10 pounds or so and weighs 280 pounds, that'd be a great size for him to be able to handle pass rushers a little easier and at the same time time stay light enough to not lose any of his quickness. But going back to the LeBron comparison, athleticism is the trait that separates LeBron from the other rare athletes with his build. A 6 foot 9, 250 pound statue who has the body control and fluid movements of a 6 foot guard. But when it comes to Darnell's athleticism, one could say that he actually does display those same rare abilities that LeBron does. He's LeBron. He has that athletic ability. He has that canvas. Although Darnell says he only views himself as a tight end, he's actually been recruited to play defensive end by several big time D1 schools. And the possibility of him being on the other side of the ball is just as intriguing. However, if someone with his size and quickness does have the ball skills of a modern day tight end, there's really no discussion. I personally think he's a tight end because he's unusual with the ball in the air. I watch guys like Gronkowski and Jimmy Graham, and they're hard to defend. And I see that vision of it. He's a modern day weapon on the football field. Even though Darnell is about to enter his freshman season at Georgia, it's not hard to consider what this kid's potential looks like playing on Sundays. The thing is, someone with his size with his kind of abilities, he's pretty much a lock to be picked in the first three rounds of the draft, no matter what he does on the field at Georgia. His potential alone is enough for him to get drafted in the first two days of the draft. But what will launch him into the first round will be the type of worker he is off the field and what his body of work will amount to at Georgia. If this kid puts up numbers in Athens, there's really no doubt at all that'll be picked in the first round. I want to go far with football. I don't want to just play in the NFL. I want to find greatness in the NFL. If he does back up his words and truly wants to go far with football by putting in the extra work, then he will definitely be one of the most unique talents we've ever seen take the field. A recruiter from 24-7 Sports said, He's definitely got first round upside. If he were to go to the right place and they're able to use him correctly and all that, I have no question, I mean no doubt, that he could be a guy that gets his name called the first day. To be so powerful yet so graceful for someone his size, if he does find success in the NFL, then he will be the type of talent that we may never see again. We've seen freaks like Jimmy Graham and Rob Gronkowski, but this kid's skill set is even more rare than some of the greatest athletes to ever live. Now, I'm not saying we're looking at the next great NFL Hall of Famer, because if he really is a baller then he'll just show us, but the possibilities behind what this kid could accomplish are pretty insane. Hopefully with the limited team organized offseason training, it doesn't hold him back from playing time his freshman year at Georgia, but either way, I know I'll be following him closely for the next few years. 
But I don't know. I mean, we've never really seen this type of talent in the NFL before, so the expectations could go either way. Do you guys think we're looking at the Zion of college football or just another Sean Oakman? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and what type of player you think he'll be. If you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and interact in the comments down below, but any kind of support from you guys is highly appreciated. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.